Hi everyone, I am here with a true story. Where miracles happen, true stories of heavenly encounters. This one is called Miracle at the Mall. But before we get started, there's a quotation, quotation before the video. There's a quote by William Temple, Archbishop of Canterbury. When I pray, coincidences happen. Not coincidences, miracles. When I pray, coincidences happen. When I stop praying, coincidences stop. Because they're not really coincidences. Right, guys? All right, I think this one has different stories in it. Or two different stories, I think. But it might all be one. I'm not exactly sure. We'll see when we read it. Okay, Miracle at the Mall. Occasionally, a story's origins can't be traced completely, but people who knew the late Howard Conister, founder of the Beverly Hills Baptist Church in Dallas, recall his integrity. They know he would have to be personally convinced that an event was authentic before sharing it with others. His widow, Helen, and some members of his former congregation now attend church on the Rock South in Duncansville, Texas, and remember this story well. Howard heard it possibly from the father himself at a Christian convention in California in the late 70s. Helen Conister says, the pastor came home and told the story to others including a nationwide television audience during a sermon. I'm anxious to hear this. A lot of miracles, or sorry, a lot of miraculous things seem to be happening in our congregation and to people we knew at the time, says Helen. This was just one more, so we accepted it as a gift from God and never felt the need to try to prove it. Hence the trail has come to an end, but the wonder remains. Somebody always wants to say, well, how do you know it's true? There, there always has to be a negative person in the bunch or, you know, there's always gonna be somebody that's not gonna believe unless they see it. What does Jesus say? Blessed are those, you believe because you've seen. Blessed are those who believe without seeing because their faith is strong enough, they know it's true without having to have seen it first. This indeed is just one story. Okay, so let's begin with the story he's gonna tell. Miracle at the Mall. Beth and Margie, two teenage sisters, had enjoyed shopping in large enclosed malls, but by the time they were ready to leave, it was dark. Standing at the mall exit, they could hardly see the outline of their car, the only one left in the section of the dimly lit parking lot. The girls were nervous as they waited, hoping a few customers would come along so they could all walk out together. Both were aware of the current crime wave. There had been muggings and rapes in the area shopping malls, and they remembered their father's warning don't stay too late. Dad's going to be furious, Beth said. Then we'd better get going now, Margie shifted her packages, pushed open the door and walked as fast as she could. Beth followed, glancing from side to side. Street traffic had subsided, but the lot seemed a bit too quiet. They had made it. Beth shoved the key into the car lock got in and reached across to open Margie's door. Just then, the girls heard the sound of running feet behind them. Well, that's not good. When Margie turned around, her heart almost stopped. Racing toward them were two ominous looking men. You are not going anywhere, one shouted. Margie screamed. Terrified, she scrambled inside and both girls locked their doors just in time. With shaking fingers, Beth turned on the car's ignition switch. Nothing happened. That's Satan. 
She did it again and again, but only the sound of the key clicked in silence. They had no power. Beth, try again, Margie was frantic. The men were pulling the door handles, pushing at the windows. Now remember guys, this is in the late seventies or so, so there would have been no cell phones. I can't, Beth cried. It won't start. The girls knew there was only one second of safety. Blow on that horn, man. Remaining, quickly they joined hands in prayer. Dear God, Margie pleaded, give us a miracle in the name of Jesus. Once more, Beth turned the key. This time, the engine roared to life. She shifted into gear and raced out of the parking lot, leaving the men behind. The girls wept all the way home, shocked and relieved at the same time. They screeched down the driveway to the garage, stumbled into the safety of their house, and told their father what had happened. He held them both close. You're safe, that's the main thing, he said. But he was frowning. It's strange, though. The car has never failed to start. I'll check it out tomorrow. Early the next morning, he raised the car's hood to look at the starter, and in one stunned glance, he realized who had brought his daughter safely home the previous night. God did, you know how? There was no battery in the car. Their battery was stolen. That car had no battery in it. But God started that car and got them home safely with no battery in that car. Some people would find that very hard to believe, but I believe every single word of it without a doubt. Because I know God can do stuff like that and can do even more greater things than that. The devil. That's the devil that wouldn't make that car start. That's the devil that had those guys chasing after them. You think they just happened to be two, two good Christian girls? They wouldn't have been chasing after them if they were already on the devil's side. No. The devil wants to get rid and hurt Christians. He wants to hurt God's people, to turn them away from God, make them think God's doing bad things to them, letting bad things happen. And the whole time he's sitting back laughing, knowing he's turning you from God. That your faith is weak. Don't let it be. Be like those girls and pray and pray. And God took care of them, didn't he? He started that car with no battery and got them all the way home. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night and a great night's sleep. Be careful if you go out because times were bad back then, but you know how bad they are these days. They're even worse. Try to make sure you always have somebody with you if you go somewhere. And always take some form of protection just to be safe. You've always got God with you, but you need to help yourself too. Take your cell phone. If you can't call somebody, if you're in the car and somebody tries to get in, lay on that horn and keep blowing. Pray, do everything you can. Lock those doors. Don't. You, can't, you can hardly trust anybody in this world anymore. It's better safe than sorry. It's better safe than sorry, guys. There's a lot of people getting hurt. There's a lot of evil people out here these days. There really is. They're just pure evil. They don't, they have, it's like they have no soul. There's, you can look into their eyes and it's just blackness. You can just see the evil in them. Just be careful and take care of one another. If you see somebody that needs help, try to help them, even if it's just calling the police or calling somebody, yelling stop and running towards them. Maybe that'll scare somebody away. Just, you know, do what you can. Pray. Pray before you go. Pray before you go for God to be with you and watch over you and keep you safe and pray for your loved ones and your friends. Good night, guys.